Welcome back, mitochondriacs, to another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. It's Dr. Peebler again, and we're going to be talking further about vitamin D because we are in the midst of our vitamin D micro series, which is an important first intervention to look at when it comes to the prevention and treatment of cancer. In the past few videos, we have looked at how vitamin D is created, synthesized in your skin from a cholesterol precursor with the use of ultraviolet B light. And we have seen that it has diverse actions on multiple areas of the cell, both in, within the nucleus and on the genome and on organelles directly, such as the mitochondria. We've seen how vitamin D is responsible for influencing various mitochondrial dynamics, whether it be fission, fusion, mitophagy, mitochondrial biogenesis, as well as autophagy as a whole, and how that influences and protects our health in various ways. But what you may not know is that vitamin D is also a master regulator of the antioxidant response element. And, you know, we haven't had a chance to discuss oxidants, antioxidants in great detail. We have not done the mitochondrial redox series yet. And I do look forward to getting into the nitty gritty of redox chemistry and mitochondrial redox to better convey topics and really get down to the root causes of what causes disease to humans. But I think it's fair to say that most of us have heard of antioxidants. And I think that most of us, when we think about antioxidants, we think about what we can take, things like vitamin C, things like astaxanthin, zeaxanthin, various antioxidants. And some of us have even heard of things that are sirtuin activators and how they act through the, the antioxidant response element, in particular, NRF2. And vitamin D also has a strong effect on several antioxidant signaling pathways. And what we'll learn during the redox series is that your body has many endogenous antioxidant systems. Now, many people have heard of things like glutathione. That's one of them. But there are various. There are pyridoxins and theridoxins and catalase and superoxidase mutase and various very powerful antioxidants that your body can create on demand when the redox state of the cell is imbalanced. And vitamin D is an important modulator of those systems. And that's what I want to show you here. So this paper is titled The Role of Vitamin D on Redox Regulation and Cellular Senescence. And it says vitamin D is considered an essential micronutrient for human health that is metabolized into a multifunctional secosteroid hormone. We can synthesize it in the skin through ultraviolet UVB rays or acquire it from the diet. Its deficiency is a major global health problem that affects all ages and ethnic groups. Furthermore, dysregulation of vitamin D homeostasis has been associated with premature aging, driven by various cellular processes, including oxidative stress and cellular senescence. So I have used the word oxidative stress, reactive oxygen species, reactive nitrogen species throughout really any of the videos that I talked about mitochondria or health as a whole. And it is seemingly difficult to really teach a lot of these concepts because they all rely on each other. And without knowing a lot of these different aspects, maybe some of the stuff doesn't make sense as well as it should. So I'm trying to attack it in the way that makes sense the most without getting too deep into various rabbit holes and missing the whole big picture. And what it says here is that various studies have shown that vitamin D can attenuate oxidative stress and delays cellular senescence, mainly through inducing the expression of nuclear factor erythroid 2 related factor or NRF2 and clotho and improving mitochondrial homeostasis, proposing this vitamin is an excellent candidate for delaying aging. Vitamin D, as you can see, is a very multifaceted molecule. It is called a vitamin, but really it is much more than that. It is truly a steroid hormone that has diverse effects on the body. And what we're talking about here in particular is its effect on the cellular redox state or the reduction oxidation state of the cellular melu. And that is important for life to continue through various chemical reactions. And what we've seen in prior videos is how the redox state of the cell, particularly through ROS and RNS, will feedback onto the nucleus or to various redox sensitive chemicals and activate genes to deal with them in excess as a feedback loop. 
And that is one of the important functions, critical functions of vitamin D. So as we've seen in the past, UV light, UVB light between 290 and 315 nanometers will photoconvert 7 dehydrocholesterol to vitamin D. Then through a series of hydroxylation reactions, 25 and 1 hydroxylase at the liver and kidney level, we have the active calcitriol. Now that's not the whole story. We have various other metabolites that we're going to go over, but that is the major pathway. And it's going to have a variety of actions as we've seen in prior videos. And one of those is through the activation of several gene products, one known as the clotho pathway, and that's going to activate things like catalase, pyridoxins, superoxide dismutase, and thyrodoxins, as well as various other hormone and chemical cascades. Then there's going to be the calcium signaling components for bone metabolism and the regulation of calcium, as well as other epigenetic factors. But then probably the more well-known of the antioxidant response elements is known as the NRF2 sensitive components. And again, you're going to see catalase, G6PD, glutathione, glutathione peroxidase, superoxide dismutase, thyrodoxins, as well as detoxification enzymes. Maybe you know about the cytochrome P450 system in the liver, which is critically important for detoxification pathways. And then it's going to also have several other signaling related functions, but definitely one of the most important functions at maintaining our health, in addition to all the other wonderful things we've learned about so far when it comes to mitochondrial dynamics and autophagy, is the antioxidant response elements and the upregulation of our body's own internal antioxidant systems to keep excess reactive oxygen species, reactive nitrogen species in check, while also not over quenching these systems. This is a very coupled system where excess reactive oxygen species signals to the nucleus to provide us with these antioxidant genes, but it's not going to be like where I mega dose a antioxidant that I take by mouth or by, by the vein, where I can completely throw us off into a reductive stress where we're actually having not enough oxidation to actually allow life to happen. So I think this is definitely the better strategy from an antioxidant perspective is to allow our systems, our endogenous systems, who knows what it needs and what it doesn't need to work adequately instead of taking large amounts of antioxidants. As proposed in earlier days, before we understood this delicate balance between oxidants and antioxidants and the important signaling that is done by these oxidants. So something else I've alluded to, but have not yet directly addressed is this idea that there are these other vitamin D analogs that are metabolized through various enzymes once the colcalciferol molecule is created. And what we have here is this is the photoisomerization step of 7-dehydrocholesterol to vitamin D3. And then in various steps, and these are these SIPs are called cytochrome proteins, and these cytochrome proteins are going to metabolize them into other analogs of vitamin D that are bioactive. They're not waste products. So it's not just the 25-hydroxy or the 1-25-hydroxy that have active biologic processes. There's a bunch of other biologically active metabolites that are important to know about and important to harvest. So lumesterol L3 is a stereoisomer of 7-dehydrocholesterol and is produced through the photochemical transformation of 7-dehydrocholesterol induced by high doses of UVB radiation. L3 is enzymatically hydroxylated by CYP11A1, producing 20-OH-L3 in a variety of hydroxylumesterols, can interact with the non-genomic binding site of vitamin D receptor, or the VDR. These intracellular receptors are mediators of photoprotection and anti-inflammatory activity. In this study, we show that L3 hydroxy derivatives significantly increase the expression of VDR, so it upregulates its own receptor, and UVB-irradiated keratinocytes, L3 hydroxy derivatives, inhibited nuclear factor kappa beta, P65 by enhancing levels of I kappa beta alpha in the cytosol. This anti inflammatory activity mediated by L3 hydroxy derivatives through suppression of NF kappa beta signaling resulted in the inhibition of expression of UVB induced inflammatory cytokines, including IL 17, interferon gamma, and TNF alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha. We conclude that CYP 11A derived hydroxylumosterols are promising photoprotective agents capable of suppressing UVB induced inflammatory response and restoring epidermal function through targeting the VDR and ROR's. So 
that was a mouthful. And basically what is happening is that in addition to the classic 25-hydroxy and 1,25-hydroxy vitamin D, there are a variety of other chemicals that are created through these cytochrome proteins, namely the CYP11-1-alpha. And when you have all of these hydroxylumosterols hanging around, they protect cells from any excess damage that UV light would incur on cells. It would also decrease inflammation in that area as well. So these are anti antioxidant related derivatives. They are anti-inflammatory related derivatives that are important for the ability for the body to absorb this important UVB radiation for various cellular processes without incurring too much damage in the process. And this is another paper called the photoprotective properties of vitamin D and lumosterol hydroxy derivatives. And what it's saying here is that these CYP11A1 derived compounds are produced in vivo and are biologically active, displaying anti-proliferative, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, pro-differentiation properties. Since the protective role of the classical form of D3, vitamin D3, 125-hydroxy D3, against UVB-induced damage is recognized, we recently tested whether novel CYP11 a1 derived D3 and L3 hydroxy derivatives protect against UVB induced damage in epidermal human keratinocytes and melanocytes. We found that along with 125 hydroxy vitamin D3 or calcitriol, the active form of vitamin D, these D3 hydroxy derivatives and L3 as hydroxy derivatives exerted photoprotective effects. These included induction of intracellular free radical scavenging and attenuation and repair of DNA damage. The protection of human keratinocytes against DNA damage induced by the activation of NRF2 regulated antioxidant response, P53 phosphorylation and its translocation to the nucleus and DNA repair induction. So as we talked about in the prior slide, there is going to be some degree of reactive oxygen species formed as well as an inflammatory response to UVB radiation. And if we did not have these critical cellular processes in our bodies, then I do believe that the literature and outcomes would show a much different response to regular sun exposure. We would probably see increased damage and there would be a, on the risk benefit scale, we would see probably more risk and harm than good. However, because in particular, we have the D3 system and all of these D3 analogs, these L3 hydroxy derivatives, we have adequate protection against UV radiation while getting maximum benefits from the D3 system as well as other systems that we'll talk about in the future. Things like melanin, things like alpha, beta, and gamma MSH, things like POMC with the beta endorphins and metenkephalins, things like melatonin, which we're gonna be talking about very shortly. These are all very important benefits to the sun, and we have mechanisms to protect ourselves from excess damage while being able to harvest all of the health-promoting and life-saving benefits from the sun. I hope that at this point, you are seeing, and I'm making the case, that vitamin D is more than just a vitamin. It is a critical steroid hormone that is necessary for the protection of human health. I do not believe that a human can thrive, truly thrive, without vitamin D and all the amazing things that it can do. In the next couple of videos, we're going to dive in to vitamin D and its direct actions against cancer. And I know that is probably, at least for some of you, what you've been waiting for when it comes to the discussion about vitamin D. But I don't think that I would do the human body and all of its beautiful metabolic pathways any justice if I was to just talk about it from that perspective. As I've laid out here, vitamin D has a diverse amount of necessary biologic processes that it regulates and controls that is necessary for the prevention of age-related diseases, especially ones that are directly related to increasing mitochondrial heteroplasmy. As you can see, vitamin D has the power by itself to tip the tables in your favor at preventing mitochondrial heteroplasmy as well as reversing mitochondrial heteroplasmy single-handedly by its ability to protect the mitochondrial DNA by eliciting an antioxidant response, by inducing mitophagy, mitochondrial-specific autophagy, as well as autophagy in general, and the ability to have influence over mitochondrial biogenesis. I hope I've made it crystal clear how vitamin D is critical for the maintenance of your health. I look forward to the next coming videos talking about how vitamin D is truly amazing at reversing cancer in addition to preventing it as we talked about. If you like this video, please like it, share, subscribe, get outside, get some sun, and until next time.